All right, good afternoon. Thanks everybody for coming out. Um, we appreciate you taking your time. So I'm Rebecca Graves and I'm the education librarian down at the Health Sciences Library. And, and I'm Tara Mettercroft. I'm an information services librarian at the Health Sciences Library. So we worked hard to not make this medically um, centric, you know, to make it more open for it, because we know a lot of you have different disciplines. Um, and before we get started, I wanted for the folks that are in the room, how many of you have done literature reviews before? Okay, so I'm seeing a few hands go up, but there's also so and how many of you have not done literature reviews? Okay, so there's a bunch of people who have not. Um, so that's good. We hope to have tips for both sides for people who are new to this and people who um, haven't done it or have done some before. Um, I'm going to do a brief overview. So if you want some more background on literature reviews themselves, we have a guide and these slides will be, we'll have them pushed out. So if you signed up for this workshop, we'll push these slides out. Plus this is being recorded. Um, and if you didn't sign up for the workshop, that's Fine, just leave your email address with us so that if you want the slides, because we do have the links in here live. Um, and then last week there was a talk. I don't know, did anybody go to the talk last week? Okay, so a few people did go to that talk. So we had that actually was also recorded, so we have that up and linked on there. Um, so for the background, and just there's a lot of ways to get to the library resources. And you, the Ellis Library that we're in now is the main library, and I put the website up there, but as Tara and I said, we're from the Health Sciences Library. Um, if anybody's from vet med or from journalism, um, et cetera, there's other libraries, so you can look for your own library and their website, but you should have access to the same resources, whichever path you take. Um, one Another source is we have quite a few databases and I, if any, is anybody want to shout out which databases you've used to search for articles? Eric, okay. JSTOR. Okay, so communication. Complete, okay. Web of Science, okay. PubMed, yay, PubMed. <laughs> um, so if, if you're not familiar with all those different databases, like Eric is Education, um, we have this link to our databases list. So there's a lot of ones that focus on different disciplines. Um, and a lot of things overlap. So you can find different things by looking in different databases. Um, next thing, I'm gonna go through some searching tips that will apply to a lot of the different you can use these in a lot of the different databases. Um, I'm assuming most, if not all of you, have a smartphone, yes? Or maybe the Alexa um, or Echo. I keep thinking of the Saturday Night Live skit um, with the silver. Um, most of what we're going to show today doesn't work so well with the natural language. Um, but you can kind of use it in PubMed. Let's see, if you do Google Scholar, that would work with natural language, but the other ones, not so much. So what you're going to be looking at is keywords and subject terms. And are you familiar with the difference between, well, keywords as in text words and subject terms? Yes, no. Okay, so there's some head shaking. Just in case there's somebody who's not, especially if you're online, keywords in this definition are words that the author used in their article. So in their title and the abstract, which is the summary, um, Subject terms are words that are tagged to, attached to, assigned to the article. Um, and some databases use subject headings really well, and some it's not as important to find out what the subject headings are. And that would be specific <coughs> to a discipline. And the, does anybody do the cited reference searching where you look at the references to find more? Yes, no? Okay, we've seen some head shake. Has anybody used databases where you can actually take an older article and see who's citing it going into the future? Okay, so, yeah, so which one did you use? Web of Science. Okay, yeah, Web of Science. So there's a few databases that'll do this, the cited reference. Web of Science will do it. There's also Scopus will do it. And um, Google Scholar. 
CINAHL, if you're in nursing, also does cited reference searching, but it's a smaller database. So if you're looking at cited reference, even if you're in nursing, I would not just stick with CINAHL. I would also go out and look at other ones. Um, all right, just a real quick review of combining searches, because when you're, you're looking at subject headings and keywords, you're going to be combining them. So I just wanted to put this up there so everybody remembers their ands, ors, and nots. So remember not, because that can help you. You can use that to get rid of sets that you don't want. You can say, I want these, not that. Um, so anybody have questions on and or not? So, okay. So, and then field searching. In a way, subject searching is field searching because you're looking at the subject field. But you can also specify which field you want to search in. If you want just the title, the abstract, a lot of the databases will have a title abstract field. Um, you can also search by author or affiliation. If you're looking for a position, I mean, if you're not here working at MU, if you're um, a graduate or a fellow or an undergraduate and you're looking for a place to work, you can always search on the affiliation to see what research are they doing? What topics are, are they searching on? And then, of course, the index terms, which matches the medical one. Um, and then truncation. How many of you use truncation? Okay. <laughs> truncation is um, where you can use a symbol at the end of the word to get all the other endings. Um, the asterisk works in all the databases, or at least the databases we're going to be talking about today. There are additional characters. So for example, if you wanted child or children or childhood, you don't have to key that all in. You can just do child asterisks. Um, if you were looking for randomized trials or randomized studies, you could do random and it would get you all those terms. Um, so if um, I haven't brushed up on my humanities examples, so but if you had a term where you want the ending, now you want to be careful with this because if you're looking for cat or cats, you don't want to use a truncation on it. You'd actually want to do cat or cats because otherwise you're going to get catastrophic, cataleptic, catatonic, um, all sorts of different cats. And then phrase searching, pretty much, you're probably familiar with this, yes, where you put quotation marks around things. I point that I will be talking about this because a lot of the databases, if you just put in the terms that audit without the quotation marks, it'll put ands between them, um, which may be fine. That may not be a problem, but just something to be aware of. Um, and then if you're narrowing down your, your search, and again, we're health centric, so the example is a little health centric here. Although probably everybody's needed some PT at some point. Um, <laughs> so if you're trying to narrow down your searching to research, ma many times you can't just say, I want research or I want evidence. You actually have to put in your methodology. So here's a list of them, but you could also do things like questionnaire, survey, um, qualitative, quantitative, interview, focus group. So if you would think about what are the methodologies that you want the author to use in the study that you want to find, or a study you would, or a methodology you would use if you were doing the study, and then you can add that to your search. And you can see that I put some truncation on this for random to add it in there. Um, and another piece, so this isn't technically a searching tip, but how many of you have an account in a database like PubMed or Web of Science, Scopus? Okay, you do. Um, okay. So the different databases will allow this. So we're going to look at Scopus today, and we're going to look at PubMed, and we're going to also look at the discovery search, which is through EBSCO. Um, most of them, it's in the upper right, and you'll see login or register or sign in or sign in down here. And what that allows you to do is save your searches, and you can either save them to just have them sit there and they'll be static, or you can set them up to run alerts. So you can say every month, run this search and email me um, the results. So that way you can keep, or you can say every week, every Tuesday or every Sunday, send me an update. And 
<laughs> you can also save the citations you find. So that's a great way to save your work as you go along, so you don't have to recreate it every time. Um, and then we'll talk about, has anybody ever had trouble getting to the full text? Yes, no, shake your head, no. So, okay, so some people are saying yes. Okay. Um, so we'll point this out as we go, but you want to look for the find it at MU button. Um, if you search in Google Scholar, it doesn't show up black and gold, but it should have find it in a new text, and we could show you how to set that up. Um, if we don't have something, we have interlibrary loan, and that's free to you. The library picks up the cost. So if there's an article you want that says not available, um, you can go ahead and request it, and we send it to you, and it's about two business days. It's all online um, and no charge. And if you have questions, oh, paper, we do have some journals that are paper, depending if you're at here at Ellis or if you're at Health Sciences or which library you're using. Um, some of our journals are in paper, so you're welcome to ask us for help with that. Um, and here's contact information on that. Um, and then, yeah, I might as well go ahead and, like, I'll actually go through all the slides real fast. Does anybody use EndNote or Mendeley, Zotero? Okay, some people are shake, shaking their head. Has anybody not heard of those? Okay, so everybody's... <laughs> okay, so I know, I'm, I'm like asking you. I, I mean, nobody comes out, nobody is born knowing about EndNote, so, um, so there's no shame in that. Um, these are three software products that are all competitors. They let you capture your references, whether they're journal articles, book chapters, you can even key in interview references and such. And then they work with Microsoft Word to help you generate your reference list. And they include several thousand citation styles. So if it's you use Turabian or Harvard or MLA or APA, you can have it set up that way. They also go for certain journals. So if you're publishing, you can have it go by that standard. Um, and these are the workshops that are being held here at Ellis Library. So if you're interested in them, um, you can check those out and take a class or a workshop on that. I think they're only online too. I think, are they? I think they're only in person. Oh, that's what I meant. In person. I'm so sorry. <laughs> in person, yeah. not online. Yeah. And then we have our contact link up here. So when you have questions, give us a shout. Um, so, actually, did we want a tab? Can I do all tab? Will that work? Yeah. Okay. So. Great. Okay. So, Rebecca gave you some general search tips. Just be aware that any database you're using, while those are general search tips, it's probably a good idea to get the sense of the database you're in, look at how they do certain you know field searching truncation stuff like that just be aware because while databases kind of all work the same they all are different databases so they're a little bit different so i would they always have faqs they have dictionaries for or thesauruses for their different subject terms because subject terms vary from one database to another so that would be my tip to look into the actual database that you are searching in Okay, so you're starting the literature review. You don't know, like you know your topic, but you don't know where to go from there. So a good idea would be to start with our discovery tool at the library. It's called Discover at MU. It's actually the main library page, library.missouri.edu. Right here is the nice little fancy search box. So what Discover at MU does, it discovers a lot of information. So it's connected to anything the library owns, what it rents, what it subscribes to, its books, journals, videos, like it's a ton of stuff. But because of that, it's good because you don't know how to quite narrow down the search yet. You don't even know what database you want to look in quite yet. So if you search for your topic in here, it will help you narrow it down a little bit more. So I'm going to do I know what we're searching. Moral, is it morals? 
Moral. Moral. Okay. Foundations. Foundations theory. So as you can see, once this loads, which is going to take a while to load, I typed in moral moral foundations theory and I got 2.7 million results. That's an insane amount. And I can guarantee you not all of them, probably a good percentage of them have probably nothing to do with what this topic is about. But because of how this database is set up, it expands your search. So if you look over here, um, it applies equivalent subjects. So that's the default. It won't tell you what those equivalent subjects are. Um, in this specific search, if you get rid of it, I think we get the same amount of results. Um, but so just be aware, it won't tell you what those are. And then also what this is searching is if it has the option full text. So a lot of databases do not search the full text of an article. They will search the title, the abstract, author keywords, subject headings. They will not search the full text. Discover MU, if it is an option, it will. So sometimes you're going to grab more because it might um, grab moral foundations theory in the text and it might not have said anything about it in the title or the abstract. Another thing to note, I typed in moral foundations theory. This is it's not phrasing. It's not phrase searching. So it's it's doing moral and foundations and theory. So it doesn't, they might not have to do anything with each other. As long as those words are in there, it's going to pull up. So sometimes it, it's based on relevance. So sometimes you'll get some good ones like here, moral foundations as a theory, um, moral foundations theory. So it does a good job of trying to pull those most important ones up, but not all the time. And so be aware, like this will bold everything. Um, you can see why it pulled up. So more foundations in the title, more foundations theory as a subject. Um, so just be aware of what's pulling up. Also, this is searching all the way from 1212. Can't tell you what that is. We can look at it because I'm kind of interested. Okay. Refine it, enter. Maybe I have to hit search again. Maybe not. Why are you being mean to me? Oh, there we go. No, damn. Okay. Oh, there we go. Hit the click on the little scroller thing. So, Bell Telephone News from, I, it has nothing to do with the date. Actually, this isn't the date because they didn't have telephones in 1212, I would assume. <laughs> um, so, just be aware that there's just some weird cataloging stuff. It's the publisher year which is wrong. So I can't tell you why I did that, but just be aware of that. So when you are in this discovery tool, your job is to, is to go from 2.7 million down to a more reasonable number to look at. Um, so here you have all the different formats that you can limit to. You click on those, great different subjects that pull up. Um, there's a ton that'll tell you United States, nonfiction, like none of the, these might not even be remotely close to what you're looking for, but here's psychology, which is what this theory resonates with. Um, you have dissertations, academic, like they, this subject list is dependent on this database, but it's a good thing to look at. Location, language, but important thing to look at is, because you don't know where to search more moral foundations theory, if you go here, you can see all the results from each specific database that pulled into this discovery tool. So you can look to see where the most came from. 1.9 million came from the Hathi Trust, um, Gale Virtual Reference Library, 10,000. So you can see where relevant ones might be. Psych Info, this would be a good one to do because it's psychology, but if you don't go through that debt, the list of databases, it's like a list by subject. This is a way that you can try to narrow it down like, oh, okay, I have 582 from psych info. Maybe I need to go find that database and search specifically in there. Another thing is, so like I'd mentioned before, this isn't 
searching this as the exact phrase and Rebecca mentioned if you put it in quotation marks it'll search exactly that phrase so you'll see when I add this these quotation marks what pulls up now 1300 is a little bit more reasonable than 2.7 so um, there are pros and cons to do phrase searching like that in quotation marks and then not because say I'm searching moral foundations theory, but someone calls it moral foundations and something else theory, it might not pull up. Um, so just kind of mess around with that a little bit. Um, let's see what else. So I think I talked about all the important things in here, but I'll talk about everything we mentioned if you need to sign up for an account, here it is, you sign in. And this is a My EBSCO host account. So other databases that are EBSCO host accounts, you'll notice they might look exactly the same as this database, it's like the what it looks like visually. Um, so another database like that is the nursing database, CINAHL. If you do searches in CINAHL, you can sign in to your account, which you made here, and you'll see that it'll tell you exactly which database you searched it in and then we'll open up in that database so the other ones like scopus scopus is all the well, that's the database you won't see any other searches apart from scopus yeah. uh, what makes all the uh, hmm? yeah what, what things uh, make the how to, or, how to search to order it oh, why is it in that order? yeah so, oh what what pulls up number one um so it's just what defaults is the relevance so it's how relevant the database thinks that article is to your search but if you look up here you can see i can make it newest i can make it oldest so the newest can show up versus the so this is from December 2017 it's from the future um, this relevance pulled up and it came from March 2017 because it thought this one was more relevant to your search and relevance is often calculated on like which fields your terms show up in so the title a word showing up in the title gets more weight than a word showing up in the abstract like it looks at text than it's showing up in the abstract um, if the words show up together um, I think it's more relevant than if they're farther apart. Um, so it's based on rankings of that. So it, um, that's how it floats it up. You know, it doesn't match with the subject heading. Um, how often do the terms show up? So all those different factors are put into an algorithm to float certain ones to the top. So there we go. Um, other things really quick. If you ever get stuck, there's this ask a librarian button that closes and opens this chat. So um, I, this is an Ellis one, so I don't know when their reference hours are open, but if librarian, so at a certain time you'll get actual Ellis librarians, but we have 24 seven chat. And so after a certain amount of time, there'll be librarians that are off site, but they'll still be able to help you. Um, so if you ever get stuck, chat is over here. Um, another cool thing, if you ever, instead of, if you don't want to save your search for whatever reason, um, this particular database has a persistent link to all the results of your search. So under share, persistent link to search, stuff like that. And then from here is where, okay, I need, say you want all 1300 of these into EndNote, you email yourself the link to EndNote to download. And does anyone have any questions about this one? Just know again that this is a discovery tool. Um, you're going to get a lot in this because it's helping you. It's, you're supposed to get a lot and then kind of narrow it down into a little as most databases. But this one, you're going to get a ton because it's just opening to open to everything. So there's no questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the PDF is not available. If you want to download the PDF, for example, this thing. Yeah. For example, if you click on that, then it uh, I mean, takes us to another, let's say, yeah. oh. another website. Yeah, good point. So, but if we 
your own planet. Yeah. The idea is saying that, for example, that you have to buy it or you have to, I mean, it's like this, how can you, I mean, how, for example, I need exactly these spots. Yeah. So how can I find them? Okay. In this database specifically, sometimes you will have where the art, the here it'll give you the actual PDF in there. If you don't, if you in any of our databases that you're searching at the library, um, you want to click this find it at MU button that Rebecca mentioned earlier. So what this does is if we have it online, it will take you to this new screen and it'll give you access to the article online. There are two other things that could happen. A screen will pop up and it'll say, we don't have this, but you would just hit this request a copy button. So request a copy. And then when you do that, it makes you log in with your paw print and then fills out this form with all the required information. All you do is hit submit. And then in one to two days, sometimes way sooner, you'll get an email saying you have this article. Sometimes you will get an email from the office, the interlibrary loan office, if the article is over $50 and they'll ask if you want it, say yes. They just need to make sure. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to say yes. Another option is if this screen here shows you a, shows you a uh, our catalog, our library catalog with our books and stuff. Like Rebecca mentioned, some of them are in print, our journals. Some of them are in print like newer, like ma they look like magazines or some of them are bound. So when we have a bunch of uh, the same journal, we send them away and they become these huge books. So we stick them in there. So if it says like, oh, this is located at Ellis Library, this is located at the journalism library, you can go and get it. You can go and get it, check it out. You can scan it yourself. But if you don't want to, hit this request a copy button, someone will go scan it for you. And that's document delivery, or I can't remember what they call it now. It's the same thing, definitely won't cost any money because the library already owns it. So always hit that find it at MU button. In some databases, the publisher button's in there. Try not to hit that one because that one will say, uh, you need to pay me $50, $60 to buy it. Always hit the find it at MU button, whether it's that actual graphic, this one, or like Rebecca mentioned and Google Scholar where it's just text. Always hit that. That is the magic key. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. On this one, I don't think you can do it on this one, but it probably seems like a lot of work. Um, one. Um, one database that does do it that Rebecca's going to talk about now is Scopus or Google Scholar does it too. Um, you would just have to copy and paste the title, put it in quotation marks in Google Scholar, um, search it that way. But it, in this particular one, no. Um, it depends on the database. Yeah, so and I'm looking at the journal, the source title on here, and I'm trying to think, would this be in Google, I mean, would it, probably Google Scholar and trying to think would it be in Scopus and I'm not sure. It depends. Um, but yeah. it might be in Web of Science. Yeah. Um, so I often will have a couple of tabs open on my computer or the database I'm searching in and then Web of Science or Scopus. I, I'm partial to Scopus so that's the one I use for that. Um, so let's see. I'm going to do new search. Oh, actually, I don't want to do that. Um, you want to go back to the library? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go and look at searching for a database because I'm going to next show Scopus. <clears throat> so here's the list that I talked about. I had we had the link on there, so you can look by subject, by type. Um, I'm going to go under. I know what I'm looking for. I could have typed it in, or I could scroll down the list of the S. And this gives you an idea of what we have, what it might look like. You know, so sometimes serendipity is a good thing to mm -hmm. kind of see, oh, what do they have? What could I look at? Um, no, I don't want to do a survey. Mm -hmm. So has anybody used Scopus? Yes, no. Okay. So Scopus does have a science slant. Um, it covers Medline, which is the medical. 
It covers Embase, which is a European database. It also covers Compendex, which is computers, informatics. Um, and then it also covers some humanities databases as well. So it's another, it's not quite one shop stop or one stop shopping, but it's a fairly large database that you can search over several um, topics. And it allows for you to do different types of searching. Notice that under the search box, it actually suggests to you that if you have multi-word phrases, you put them in quotation marks um, for the phrase searching. That's not as, if you're searching just that phrase by itself, you can play with it. And actually, if, well, actually, I'm not sure everybody has a computer. I was thinking I was going to make you guys try moral foundation theory with and without the ands, but I see not everybody's on a computer. So I'll actually do that real fast myself. And if you have a topic that you're working on, you can try it with yours. <clears throat> so if I search it without the quotation marks, you can see that it actually puts, it searches it as an anded phrase with the, the ands. Um, if I back out of here and I put quotation marks around, and I got, I did that really fast. I got like 1,200. And then if I put quotation marks around it and search on it, you can see now it drops it way down to 147. Um, another piece about phrase searching and knowing your database is that Scopus, when you put quotation marks on it, it's not doing a hard exact phrase. It's actually doing all those words together, but they could be in any order with quotation marks. Um, so they call it a loose phrase. So it could be theory, moral foundations, you know, um, if that were to happen. <coughs> All right. The next thing is that when you're looking at searches, and you bear with me if you already have this, is to check and say, are there other terms that I can use in my search? If you're using something like this, maybe you have to have that exact phrase and there is no other option, but you might say, well, maybe I don't. Maybe I can expand out and use something else. And as I scan through these um, titles, I see things like moral transgressions, um, moral foundations without the theory after it. Um, here's another one. Let's see. There's moral judgments, moral values. So though, that's a tip in, when you're searching, whether you're in Scopus or the Discovery Tool or any other database, is keep a sheet of paper next to you, or if you're digital, keep a document open where you can track your terms. Some of them you may end up crossing off, um, but you want to be able to build your search and build all the terms that you want to use. Um, so, and you notice here, since we were talking about interlibrary loan, if you see here, you see the find it at MU, you would click on that the same way to get to the full text um, because Scopus is not going to have the PDFs in there. So again, it varies database by database, whether you'll see a PDF, some do, some don't. Um, and here's the full text. You can download the PDF. As Tara said on the right, if you had any problems, you could report those. Because you might have some problems. Like one thing I've run into is if you hit find it at MU, it doesn't show you your article, it just shows you the publisher website and it just, where is it? Well, if you ever have that problem, report it. Or it says something like an error, report it. If it didn't actually show you the article, but you're on some website that kind of looks like it should have it, still request a copy, someone will find it for you. So yeah, those are two good things. So it's two links right there. So going back to Scopus, many of the databases on the left-hand side, as we saw with the discovery tool, have your refined results. These are going to vary again. Um, Scopus has it by year. You can narrow it down by authors. For example, Haidt is one of the founders of this theory, so you could go with his, even though he doesn't have the most articles on here. Um, subjects, again, subject area. Document type, the article, the different types of documents pretty broad in most databases. So article, article of press, conference paper, review. Um, 
that's one reason why I pointed out earlier that if you're looking for research, you want to think about what methodology would you use or what methodology are you looking for to find research that you could add into your search. Um, again, they have some additional filters. Language is one that's sadly important to me. Um, and so this is actually, these are all, there's only one that's in a foreign language and that's Czech and you could even leave it as it is or you could either limit to or exclude. So that's your options here. Um, um, so going back, so say so you've looked at your search and you're like, okay, I've got some ideas. We can actually add in other search terms on the right hand side, you have a plus. So this is similar to the EBSCO, which is the discovery search. So I could add another term. So I could say, well, what if I wanted to narrow this down? And so I'm going to go with, um, say I was looking at this in relation to climate change. Um, so I have some options. I could do either climate, I could do climate change, probably put the quotation on it. I might do environmental. Um, so if I did climate, change um, tip here I could have done environment but then you run into institutional environments like what is the you know and we just had the climate form forums here on MU so you run into what is the environment of the business or what is the business environment what's the institution environment so I said well, environmental might be a good word because you might say, well, why didn't you truncate on this? Why didn't you put the asterisks after environment? And I could, but you know, it's, it's a decision, it's a trade-off. Has everybody heard of the phrase signal to noise? No? Okay. It's an old radio and radar say, um, saying, which is probably why people don't hear of it so much. So you want to be able to actually see your target, see what, or, or receive, see or receive. So if you're trying to dial it, if you think back to the old radios and you want to dial in to get to the broadcast, you want to get more of the speaker's voice or the music than static. Um, you can also do it with radar as well. So the signal is actually the music or the voice and the noise is the static. Um, and so that's what you're trying to dial in on these databases. So, um, so then I'm going to click search. And this really dialed it way down to six. So this is the type of search where you might end up having to broaden it out. Because a lot of times you're like, oh my gosh, I've got two million or I've got 1,300. Um, but this is one where like, oh, great, I got six. I need way more than that. So this is where you would look through these and you would try to come up with additional terms. Um, bless you. So for example, if I decide to look at some of these, um, like if I pick a number three, and click on it and get it to go. So now I'm looking at the full reference. You can see the source or the journal it came from, the article and the author's institution. They highlight, as most databases do, what you found. And then here's the subject headings. So you can see I mentioned Embase was one of the databases they search. So the M tree are the terms that they find. So it found climate change. Um, and they actually didn't have it on here. Oh, they do. They have morality. So I might say, oh, maybe I don't have to look specifically for this one theory. Maybe I should broaden it out and do morality. Um, and then MESH is the medical subject headings that would get you the Medline or PubMed database. And then sometimes they'll have the, if the author has keywords, they'll have the author's keywords. Um, and we talked about reference searching and somebody else mentioned that too. Um, so if I scroll down in Scopus, it'll show me all the references this article had. So this is a, um, Scopus will do this. And I think, does Web of Science do that? Okay, um, we'll have to check Web of Science might this as well. Um, many other databases don't, but this is great because you can actually have your references are listed here and you can actually go back to those other articles and you can also see how many times they have been cited and you can look at those citing articles. So you can search by who's commenting, who's communicating with whom. 
And here's the find it at MU to get to those articles so you can get to the full text. I just noticed this one's been cited 11,000 times. <laughs> that I've never seen that. <laughs> I don't know if that would get somebody tenure or not, but that would be pretty astounding. Wow. Um, that's pretty amazing. And then if you look on the right, you'll see whether this article itself has been cited going into the future, and this one has not, um, which actually is not surprising. Uh, because, well, it only came out in October, so it's fairly new. Um, you may be wondering about the plum metrics. Has anybody looked at this before, seen this? So a lot of times we track articles by how, you know, how rigorous, how well it was written, how many times it's been cited, what journal it was published in. Um, the plum metrics is a capturing how many times this has been used on social media, in the newspapers, on blogs. So a different look at metrics. So, you know, did it make it on the nightly news? Has it been picked up in key blogs? You know, have people been tweeting it out? So, yeah. Online question, can I filter according to frequency of citations? Hmm. Uh, I know you can sort it by that. Um, if you look at your, actually, let me, if you look at your, res, ha, I'm sorry, clicked on the wrong thing. If you look at the results where it has document title authors and cited, oh, sort on. If you come up here, you can do sort, cited by, and you can do highest and you can sort it that way. Um, that's actually a good question. I'm gonna have to go and actually look that up and see if you can actually search by how many times something's been cited. Um, all right, I'm gonna click back on search. Um, I'm looking at my notes to see what I've missed. I wanted to scroll, so I went back to the main page, the document search where we were searching on topics. If I scroll down, I see my search history. So this is what I've searched before. I can use this to get back to previous searches so I don't have to retype them, um, so I can save some time. If I can say, oh wait, this isn't working, let me go back to my first search and I can come back to it. Um, I can also use this to combine sets. So if I scroll over to the right, you can see it has pound one and not pound three. Um, so if I had sets, I could take my set numbers and you do have to put the pound sign in here. Um, so if the database gives you an example, follow, you know, if it needs a pound sign or not. Um, and I could say, I want, maybe I want set one, but I don't want the ones with climate change. So I can say this, not that. Um, so you can use that. And I also want to point out again, we mentioned that you can save, you could register up here or log in to save your search and you could set it up um, as either an alert or you could set it up and then just come back to it by going into your account and pulling it up. Um, I'm going to clear this because I want to show an example of an article that we don't have. So like if you needed to request it by interlibrary loan. In Scopus, you can search by field here on the first page. So you could say this is an article title. There are other options here. So the default is article titles, abstracts, and keywords, including the author keywords, the entry, and the mesh. Um, you could also search specifically by an author. You could search by um, affiliation, um, language, and I'm not seeing citation in here. So I'll have to keep looking for that one. All right, so we have article title. I'm going to click search. 
I didn't like it, perhaps I have to put it in quotes. It should be in here because I found it in here. Yeah, I'll do it as the default. I apologize for that. My example broke. Did I mistype it? That's one thing I often do. That's one thing to keep in mind is, you know, check your spelling. Um, there we go. Oh, no, I didn't find it. Right. Um, It is defeating me today. All right, well, I'm gonna try this one and we'll see if it comes up that I actually have it or not. Uh, we do have it. This would be one if you're getting it, as Tara said, if it's a problem, you can actually report a problem and say it's not coming up. Um, or you also sometimes have to wait for these. They can take a while to get up here. So I apologize for that. I'll come back with an example of one that we don't have. Um, but I'm gonna move on. Um, so, go ahead. One more question. Sure. Uh, do you have any suggestions in finding articles using a specific data set? Uh, no, I'm, no, that's a different class. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but if they want to leave their, we could take their name and number and get back to them. Um, let's see. So, you can add on different sets here or different search. So you can add in your searches when you come up with your topics, fill them in here. Um, I want to point out that there's an advanced search in Scopus. So if you want to search more than with just and or or, if you need, for example, the words to be near each other, um, there's a feature for that if you go into advanced search. You have the option of using the with operator. So if you say, well, I don't have to have it be an exact phrase. It doesn't have to be this with this, but and is just too broad. It's like and up in, you know, the words in the title and foundations in the abstract. You can say, but I want it within so many words. Like maybe the words have to be within three words of each other. Or um, they say that three to five words is a sentence and 15 words is a paragraph. So you can use this feature to say, I need it to be with, and if you click on it, it'll give you a definition of that. So, and it also pops it up into the search up at the title, or up at the top. So you can say it needs to be, so if I put in moral, within, oops, I, I know, I need to look at the, the screen in front of me, not the one across. Moral within three of oh, actually I need a field. And then you can also specify your field. So you have different fields on here. So if I wanted it in off, um, actually let me cu um, cut this and paste it in here so you want it with <laughs> all right i don't know who had that all right so let me start that over again guess we should have cleared clear the form well actually i'll just type so you can use the with key all right so i'll put moral with in three of and then i can say oh actually well where am i author title key I have syntax 
Um, so, I'm sorry about that. So, but you can get down here and on the right, there's a search tips screen. So if you really want to get advanced, um, you can come in here and say, how do I find multiple terms? How do I use with the different operators? Um, and, and use the different fields here for Scopus. And a lot of the different databases will also have that as well. Um, Okay. Did anybody have any questions on? Oh, she has a question. Sure. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Free. Oh, free. So if you go to advanced, the pre operator, it's where it precedes it, so it has to be in front of it. So, um, so it, the width is either order, but the pre is that the word is before it. So if you want it to not have to, to follow it. So it gives you, so you have some really advanced searching in here. Um, <coughs> so when you approach your system at, or your, when you approach your literature review, you can start as Tara did with the discovery tool you can also jump into one of the specific databases and you can just start with a base with an um, a search using their search boxes. A lot of them will have advanced features that you can jump into. Um, you can also search by authors if you wanted to look for a particular if you have an author that you're tracking. So up here across the top is where I'm clicking on documents, authors, affiliation and advanced. Um, I had mentioned affiliations before is an option for finding if you know if you're looking for a um, places to partner with, places to um, get jobs at, to see what are they publishing on. Um, any questions on that? Does anybody have questions on how to get to the full text or how to combine terms? Um, and getting to the search history can be useful to copy and paste. Um, did anybody, this is kind of a dicey question because did anybody have a particular database they're interested in? Um, I will say if um, you're starting your literature review and you don't know where to start, that's what the librarians are for. Um, you can set up consultations with us um, about your specific topic. Like obviously we don't know all of your specific topics and I'm sure they're all very different and then would be in different databases, different search strings. So you're more than welcome to meet with your subject librarian. So Rebecca had said that there's a contact us page on it. Um, is a specific, I can't think of the word tab that has all the subject librarians. So you're gonna have a psychology one. You're gonna have an engineering librarian. You're gonna have a journalism librarian. Like if there's a topic, whatever your topic is, there's a librarian for it. And if you still can't find who you need to contact, just contact me or Rebecca and we'll be able to pinpoint you who to talk to. But yeah, that's one of the things that we offer is like actual consultations for literature searching to help you start or help you if you're stuck, like you don't know where else to go, we can give you ideas and stuff like that. Because I know this is very general, like this is the first stop you off, get, you get to literature searching right now, literature review searching. So yes. And as Tara mentioned, so on our main page underneath content quick links there's contact us and there's contact a subject librarian that's their chat and there's also subject librarians and so you can go down by the subject to find a person who's familiar with the databases in your area um, and that might also help with the data set question that came from online 
So if you have a particular facet, you know, we can check with, because I know we have some really good, excellent, you know, government document librarians and et cetera in different fields. And sometimes topics are very interdisciplinary. Um, don't be afraid to ask someone who, for one topic, will contact the other librarian. For instance, I got a search request yesterday about advertising in hospitals. So it's a journalism component, communication component with health. And so I'm gonna probably talk to the journalism librarian to help me with the search because there's two different parts of it, like two big ones, like I'm sure you're gonna get to a lot of different ones once it gets down, but you know, don't be afraid to ask our help for any of this. And remember again that if you're interested in um, the saving your citations in Zotero or Mendeley and EndNote, and if you need question, if you need help with that, there's classes coming up on October 6th for EndNote, October 13th for Mendeley, and October 20th for Zotero, um, and those are all listed on the website as well. And in person. I got it. Right. Yeah, and in person. On, they're not online. Most of our yeah. classes are both, but this one's in person. Yeah. And so hopefully that gave you some more tips for searching and places to start, um, ways to use the different databases. They are, there's things you can, as we went through, there's things you can do in all of them, but some of them, like Scopus, will let you do the a, a width. Um, PubMed, for example, does not. But Ovid Medline will let you use adjacent. So depending on what your search needs are, you know, we can help you figure that out and see which database do you need based on subject and also based on the terms you're looking for. And if you do have any questions or any problems getting into full text, give us a shout because you shouldn't have to pay for the full text. You should be able to either get it online or request it through interlibrary loan or at the very worst have to come to the library and scan a copy. So. <laughs> Um, last call for, or well, last call, not la last call for this class for questions, but you're always welcome to some, send them in later. So. Any questions from the online folks? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. And again, feel free to contact us whenever you have questions or whenever you need help with a search.